Here's a photo of the Palace of the Soviets building, if it were to have actually been built. This thing looks massive. I think I know why you, you didn't want to build this, Russia. Now, the main function of the palace would have been to house sessions of the Supreme Soviet, and it would have become the world's tallest skyscraper at over 1,300 feet. But this was back in the day, though. They stopped construction in 1941. I wonder why they chose that specific date to just stop construction. I mean, it's not like they were dealing with some crazy invasion, were they? They would later go on to design four different versions of it, with each iteration becoming a little Little smaller and smaller. I think they might have bitten off more than they could chew. An alternative universe where when you Google this name, a very different Wikipedia article pops up. Born 1889, this Austrian man later became a painter and a writer. I see he still had service and oh, he married somebody familiar. All right, these books are a little, uh, out there. Tenement Square, but instead of a communist victory, it was actually a nationalist one. Oh, yep, that is a familiar symbol up there, and wait, that is not the regular Chinese flag I'm used to. I see a little bit of blue there. Hmm, I wonder if the same sort of redacted things in this square would happen in this universe. You may never know. The Imperial Invasion of Earth, except it's 1918. Too bad they didn't come four years earlier. We could have seen like a massive Earth alliance. In a way, I mean, like an alien invasion would kind of be great, because I think we'd put aside our different differences and I'll try to figure out how the hell we're going to defeat these at-ats. I mean, I guess we could always nuke it into oblivion, but this is a little early before they had nukes. If the French city of Paris was built with a highway-centric infrastructure, this literally looks like a dystopian hell. What a way to, like, just completely negate the beauty of the Eiffel Tower. I guess I never thought about just how much, like, the lush green really adds to this structure. It's like the green and the fountains. Like, it helps when there's nothing around, too, just to show you how tall it is. I never really thought about how important this surrounding area Area is when you're gonna build something as amazing as this. Me, a time traveler in the past, talks to a stranger. The whole new timeline. I claim this territory for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, and for the British Empire, this is not the end of our mission, it is the beginning. Okay, I don't know what the hell you told this random stranger, but it appears the British Empire has never fallen, and they are the first to make it to space. First of all, how far back did you even go back in time? Second, what did you say, and who did you say it to? That is the more fascinating thing. How did you cause this reality? of all things. I guess they couldn't have gone that far back in time, but enough for the British to have crushed the no-no Germans at the very least, just single-handedly. How would history change if there was a giant disembodied hand that zooms around the planet and crushes one random person <laughs> with its <laughs> index finger every day? It's called the hand, and it's always slightly faster than you think. <laughs> All right, whoever posted this has clearly been taking too many mind-altering substances. That's the only way you'd come up with something so specific as this. The only thing to know for sure is that it would spend a lot of its time in China and India, just as, like, population density goes, as where by far the most people are. What is my purpose, says South America? You stay the same. Oh my god. Doesn't matter how crazy some of these old history things get, there is only one consistent in every universe, and that is South America doesn't change. I will say those are some of my favorite alt history scenarios, though, like Brazil becoming a superpower, or Argentina militarizing after the huge influx of no-no Germans. New evidence suggests that Hilter, beloved camp manager and amateur painter during the 30s and 40s may have had connections to the far right. <gasps> I'd imagine there'd be a whole Netflix documentary exposing him. Here comes Twitter to cancel him a hundred years later. In old history, where JFK survives until 2005, after surviving an attempt on his life in 63, he served another term and avoided escalation in Indochina. Didn't he ramp it up, though? I mean, I guess it's hard to say what he would have done after that. I'm assuming now, nah, probably was gonna go communist either way, though. What if the United States won literally every war? So let's just start off with North America and figure out how this happened. They got all of Canada because of the War of 1812. They probably just annexed everything. Same thing with the wars against Mexico. We got Cuba and a lot of the Caribbean because we fought Spain in the beginning part of the 1900s, or is that, I don't know, around there. Now, I have no idea exactly what happened in South America. This is definitely a nice universe where it didn't stay the same. After that, I really can't tell. I mean, I'm assuming we completely obliterated the Soviets, whether it was a Cold War or not, totally broke them up. We got full annexation over Japan after WW2. We still control the Philippines. Everything else, I, I can't figure it out. And this timeline isn't just the Americans winning battles. They are literally obliterating their enemies and getting everything they ever wanted. This is actually the most ridiculous scenario you could ever imagine. A high-resolution image of communist America, the year 2098. Not exactly sure how it happened. Maybe they're is a resurgence of communism over time? Or did we turn communist back in like the 60s or something? Oh, oh, is this 
saying where it started. Did it begin in 2068? Man, there is just red everywhere. Also, we're sporting a whole new flag. Is that a spaceship up there or some sort of high rise? Hmm, I wonder what these people's social credit score is. You know, they all probably got some of those. It'd be cool like in the future when everyone has like Google glasses on that you could just like easily view everyone's number and there becomes like this hierarchy like, ha, this bro's only at 3,000. Imagine being a non-patriot. Who are you? Shows a map of California owning Baja, California. Do you have the slightest idea Idea how little that narrows it down. Basically referring to the fact that just about every alt history for some reason gives us Baja California. Honestly, and that's me too. The amount of times I've done it as well, it's just too easy. It's Baja California. Like, does it not seem like that should be ours? I'm sorry, Mexico. I just, I'm just playing. Oh yeah, I love this one. So instead of the Korean Peninsula being divided, this is a world where Japan is divided. Oh, this actually makes no mention of Korea actually, but I would assume if the Soviets landed, they probably got all of the Korean Peninsula. Who's Jack? Churchill. Is that Churchill's son? If it wasn't for those damn Yanks, we would have kept the war going for another 10 years. So we used the same strategy as we did with the Germans, except also in Japan. So the Soviets got the north side, since that's the closest to their borders. We got the USA in the middle. At first I thought this was going to be like a no-go zone. Then there's China with this, Britain with that, joint admission. No, like, I don't know, Dutch or French territory? You didn't give them anything? That'd be kind of cool. I know they didn't really participate probably in the fall of Japan, but I'm just saying. It'd be a weird Japan. Doesn't the U.S. get all the strength with, like, this middle part here? Isn't that where most things are? If that one Norwegian landslide didn't end up wiping out half of all of Northern Europe during the Neolithic period. I kind of knew a little bit about this, but I didn't know that it wiped out, like, half of Northern Europe. I knew about Doggerland. Like, if you look at, like, ocean sea levels, this land is like only 30 feet deep or something like that. I don't know if it's that maybe 50. Was it really just a Norwegian landslide or is this like just a part of the alternative history? I know that the ice was a major cause of it. I think at the very least it's possible we could have had just like a small island out here. There's technically a dog archipelago going on. I know that like when I say dog it literally sounds like I'm just making that shit up but it really is called Dogger Hills and Dogger Land. We ain't talking about Atlantis here like I, somebody actually named it that. But without this water here the world would never be the same. The amount of times this channel has saved the British, I mean, it's basically their entire history. The 2020 US presidential election, if there were multiple parties. So we still have Trump, the Republican, versus Joe Biden, the Democrat. Then we have Bernie Sanders from the Progressive Party and Pete Buttigieg from the, I don't know what that is, a combination of both. Joe Jorgensen, the Libertarian, and Howie Hawkins, that's still the same. Gloria Lavriva, she's a socialist, and Rocky De La Fuenta from the Alliance Party. I don't even know who the rest of these people is, but okay. It would be fascinating to see. I don't exactly know who would be taking votes away from who. I would assume it would be even closer, like it could change the results, but I don't know. Maybe all these parties have like the same pool as the Libertarian and Green Party. Then I don't think anything would change. Maybe these two, actually. These two would probably change things. How most people draw post-apocalyptic maps, random skirmishes of people in Europe, Mexico invading parts of the still populated areas of the United States. Just random borders really drawn all over the place. But what the apocalypse would be in reality. Yes, it'd pretty much be the exact thing as whatever the hell the Holy Roman Empire was. This literally was the apocalypse just like contained to only Germany. Because like, this is way too big. Like, there's no way after the apocalypse we'd be able to get, I mean, maybe after a long time, but immediately after, yeah, it'd be really tiny and just gross. That's the ultimate way to make all map nerds just disgusted. I don't think we'd be able to survive a post-apocalypse scenario, guys. We'd want to live on just a disgusting map like that. Joseph Steelman, a writer and politician. Oh, is this like his an original name or something like that? He was a Georgian-American writer, economist, and politician. He served as a congressman from New York. I love this. His favorite economist is Ayn Rand. I wish this dove a little bit deeper. He's a Republican, and his last days were spent in Manhattan, New York in 1968. So this is kind of like the Hilter one. Very different reality. Maybe he escaped during the Russian Revolution, came over to the U.S. He didn't want to be a part of that. Ooh, a World War One that occurred during the American Civil War. So instead of all of Europe making like Switzerland and just kind of watching all the action from the sidelines, they actually decided to choose a side. Now, I know the Confederates did ask for help. They wanted someone to join in. And I don't know if it's like that crazy that the U.K. might have wanted to help out. I mean, didn't they still somewhat have a grudge at that point? I don't know how you would have got France and the UK on that side. Then somehow Austria and Mexico joins in. I guess Mexico wants their revenge too. I could see that. But Mexico's also divided. It looks like there's also a little split. The USA would get Russia, Prussia, and this probably would just happen because like other Europeans don't like these guys. They got to be on the opposite side. Italy randomly. Wow, look at some of these commanders. Abraham Lincoln, Alexander II, 
Frederick, Wilhelm the First, what is this, Napoleon the Third? Yeah, this would be absolutely nuts. Still took place over the course of four years, and it resulted in a Union victory, ending the Confederate States, and also the collapse of the Second Mexican Empire. Oh yeah, the British would probably no longer be in North America either. They wouldn't have Canada. It is a little strange that, like, none of Europe cared. All this chaos was happening in our continent, and they're like, oh, that's, that's cool. If only those countries knew the future, there'd be a lot more at stake, I feel. They'd be like, yeah, we're gonna probably want to step in. A map of the world if the Allies attempt to appease actually worked out. So they just literally gave Germany whatever they wanted and then after that somehow Hilter didn't declare war on everybody. Alright, let's, yeah. Okay. So they pretty much got their really thick borders back. What's going on with this? Is this like a sort of German puppet thing that's going on? They obviously got all of Austria. They just took the sedate land. They wouldn't want all of Czechoslovakia. Maybe they couldn't argue it enough. It looks like Hungary got some stuff too. How'd they get that lucky? Now does Hilter just like use this and continue to build up? Does he wait like a decade or two? Oh man, that's a scary thought. A world where the Holy Roman Empire turns into something like this. Basically, Charlemagne marries Irene. Is that the Queen of Byzantium, I'm assuming? So instead of Charlemagne dying and we getting like East Francia, Middle Francia, West Francia, they marry, solidifying, just like bringing back Western Rome and Eastern Rome. Why didn't they do that, actually? Oh, probably like faith reasons or something. I don't know. There would be some interesting borders, that's for sure. I would think they'd probably want to get Iberia all back. Passengers safe. Steamer badly damaged. Crawls towards Halifax. 600 miles off course. Oh, it doesn't say course, but I'm assuming it would say that. I guess this is a universe where the Titanic hits the iceberg, but maybe the fail safes were able to keep it around, keep it afloat until they got to Canada. I have read that there were some design flaws that could have definitely helped it survive. Like, it is possible that it could have hit that iceberg and still been alright somewhat. I mean, I don't know. I'm not the expert though about that shit. There are people that are, like, crazy obsessed. New York City, or the capital of the American Reich. Basically, a man in the high castle scenario comprises of five boroughs sitting where the Hudson River meets the Atlantic Ocean. Head of State Reich Fuhrer John Smith? Pretty average name, but all right. That's a very different Times Square. Never imagined that. A currency in a different universe where Latin America is way stronger. Maybe instead of like the EU, there's some sort of Pan-American Union. We have the thousand dollar peso, the 500, the 200, the 100. We had all these old iconic rulers. That's cool. Bolivar up here, San Martin. I like the inclusion of the natives. And then for the coins, the backside of the coin would would be unique to each country. That'd be a lot of different coins to produce. Unless maybe in this world, I don't know, maybe Central America is all one big thing. It'd make it a little bit easier. A world where the Kingdom of Ireland is established in 1922. So they have a united country here after the British are gone. This is the king for 30 plus years. Dang, so even after WW1, they'd still be doing the monarchy thing. The languages would be mostly bilingual between Irish and English, only a couple of percentages speaking only one. Of course, Roman Catholicism would be a semi-constitutional monarchy. wonder how this would play out in WW2. I think they'd still probably try to stay out of it. I mean, I guess they survived since they made it to 1957. The 20... <laughs> I don't even think I can say this one with a straight face. The 2016 election, except the candidates are swapped. Donald Trump with his beard is running for the Democratic Party, and Hillary Clinton is a Republican. They both still have the same running mates, and the vote is still won by the same margin, except the parties are flipped. I love the backstory behind this, though. Hillary is a famous wife from a moderate Southern governor, and Trump is a loudmouth war vet turned mayor of New York. Italy, if it had an effective army during WW2. So first of all, they would have probably won in Greece without needing Germany's help, they would have actually done something against France. They win here in Ethiopia, and they can actually hold down the African front. So this is all theirs. They're pushing back the British, even moving up and getting some of those old French colonies in the Middle East. And with that, Germany would probably be able to focus a lot more on the Soviets. And uh, yeah, that could be definitely an Axis victory. I mean, again, this is not just like them winning battles, though. I mean, they're absolutely obliterating everything they're a part of. This is very one-sided. Poor pasta people. A world where Freddie Mercury becomes a politician. We have a Guardian article up here showing how Mercury spends three billion to save the arts, basically. Oh, wow. I totally forgot he was British right now. I was like, ah, I wonder what American party he'd be running under. I almost like totally messed this up. I would have talked about him being like a U.S. dude. Freddie Mercury, a British politician, activist, and former singer-songwriter. Oh, he's serving as the prime minister here in the U.K. in 2020. Got this good old beard going on. He's Labor Party, and he's 75 years old. Freddie Mercury with a Twitter account. Why is that like the most craziest thing to me? PM on No No Afghan. We're in precarious situation, my tears. And big thanks to the October patrons. Majestic Unicorn. Poppy Drew Woo. I love Marks. Drew's Thick Breaks and Girlfriend. Drew's Argentinian Grandpa. Aryan After Hours. Bring Back Poland Ball. Alfonso M6. Barnsky W. Dalton D. Fulson Nick. Ivan Lima. Jesse C. Luxembourg Lover. Max Cooper. Nick Blorf. Mine Brothers 999X2. And Stormtrooper 501. Thank you.